Hello to the chicos and the chicas on the YouTube. Chandra is back. <coughs> and uh, Chandra is doing his speedrun. It's a rather unusual thing to face the opening of Knight F3 uh, in the rating range that we currently are in. Um, and so I'm just assuming that this is going to transpose into the London Plague. Uh, but no, I'm fully wrong. So Queen out early and without any intention of doing any damage whatsoever. So we are just going to fight for Senta because that's what my course is all about. Senta, seize the Senta. I was considering Knight C6, but then after D4, it would have been still a challenge to play for E5. Okay, now we can gain space, but I have a very strong feeling that if I take this queen takes that I play knight c6, my opponent is going to be very tempted to take this, and I want that to happen. So let's take c4. He's going to take back, then we go knight c6. And then we are going to see how this whole shebang is going to <coughs> continue. So the idea is that if it takes knight c6, and just like good old Morphy, we are sacrificing the pawn. I did mention good old Paul already in the previous video, and there is a reason for that why I'm referring to Paul, because uh, my good friend Paul is the person that we are relying on most when it comes to playing against this rating range. Because as you can see, the style, if I can call it that at all, or the mindset they are playing with is very anti morphy in that there is no development to be observed and there is no central control to be observed. On the other hand, there is cheap tricks to be observed. Um, and so as long as we refute the cheap trickies and play the right type of chess, which is rapid development, central control, even at cost of material, you are going to be all over these people in this rating bracket. And so that's what we do here. Um, the idea is to just uh, exploit these mistakes. Queen two moves, knight two moves. Now he's playing a correct move actually by bringing the horsey to the party. Now I'm rather tempted to go knight d4. Trying to exploit the fact that the queen is a little bit homeless. On c4, check bishop d7, queen all the way back. Is a way to go. I could go h6, knight back e5, followed by bishop e6. Last but not least, I could also go via knight b4, which would cut queen a4 off, but it would still allow that. Hmm. Okay. Let me think about how to best approach this. I don't know, man. I'm going to call it knight d4, centralizing the knight and threatening c2. Uh, and we'll take it from there. Good to see that the chat is wildly obsessed now, talking about uh, different foreign languages instead of uh, engaging with the Chandra show. But that's all right. That's all right, because they will rewatch it on YouTube, so it's all good. Queen a4 is pretty much only move as far as I can tell. Queen d3 is very clumsy. Playable, but clumsy. In which case, by the way, I would play knight d5. Interestingly, me too, moving the same pieces. Because that hits g5 as well as knight b4. But maybe they can then go knight here. Now, I didn't reckon with this move. And because of we are crazy arrogant, we know that that means that that's either a terrible move or a very good one. But what I meant by being crazy arrogant is that I was hinting that it has to be bad. But actually, I don't see why it is an insta loss. Now, I'm not overly happy with the way I'm playing this game. Hmm. 
I don't know. I'm thinking about h6 takes and then perhaps takes this. Just to make it a little bit quirky. Knight comes back, a6, knight goes back, b5. Okay, let's go, let's go crazy. I like this. The only problem that I didn't like is that after take, take, knight, f3, I don't have an easy way to defend the pawn here. And that's a big, big, uh, fat central pawn. I would not want to lose that boy at all. If knight f3, I probably am going to take that knight. And then I'm going to get a lot of extra tempi uh, on this knight out here. <laughs> Is he pretending to think for content? <laughs> no, I was genuinely thinking, actually. Uh, but I uh, love the question. All right, so let, let's go a bit uh, cuckoo with this. I like this. It's a semi-open H file. Uh, Simon Williams would already be like Black Winds by force. <laughs> Maybe knight of three g four knight e five is the thing. It looks extremely suspicious, but uh, I don't see an immediate refutation. Unfortunately, my bishops are somewhat uh, limited in their ability to join the fray in a remarkably quick fashion. Which is why I don't think that I can realistically look for winning moves. <clears throat> I'm really itching for some pawn sack to accelerate my development a little bit. I can go here, here, and then queen d4, by the way, or queen d5 even. Okay, let's go. Magyar Surker, how are you going, man? Some fellow Hungarians in the chat, always good fun. So do we go queen d4 or do we go queen d5? My problem with this is that there is a fifth millionth check with the queen. Knight d7, take, bishop takes, queen b7. This queen looks better on d5. So now we are going to stir towards an endgame, which is an utter failure of what has been happening. Because from here, we should have never ever traded queens. So I am greatly regretting some of my decisions. I'm not 100% sure which ones were the ones that uh, led to this situation. Okay, so now we are earning another tempo on this knight. After knight d3, I could consider c4, knight e g5, knight g2. Oh my god, like this looks like some absolutely crazy, crazy game. Okay, so now the first tactical blunder has landed on the board. Um, Finally, after takes, knight takes, I can pick off the g3 pawn utilizing the h5 pin. Very well timed because I was about to get very upset about how poorly I was playing this. So let's take this boy here. And now king d1 is forced. And if I go knight e4, he might have rook g1. Let's just come home. I don't want to complicate matters unnecessarily. Now knight e4 is a plan. Maybe bishop f5 is a move to deny the king's exit that way. With rook g1, I reckon I'm going to play g6. b3 makes some kind of sense. Could go via g4 as well. Bishop f5. Yeah, bishop f5 was certainly a move, yes. Probably better than what I did. Now, I can always shut this bishop down with d4. So I'm just going to go and centralize. 
which is probably not as accurate as g4 because then from g4 I would have had two targets uh, to feast on. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of suboptimal moves I'm actually playing in this game, so this is going to make for a terrible YouTube video. But um, we have to own what we do, right? So now for the second time he walks into the same trickery. And now it has got uh, fatal consequences because if he then check and if takes, I take. So he actually saved the day for me there a little bit by not allowing me to embarrass myself any further. And now bishop h3 and knight takes g3 are both going to cause carnage. In this case, it's bishop h3 because if knight takes, then king f2 and the knight, a rook king combo defends f1. But if I play bishop h3, then there is no legal move that defends this sufficiently. And perhaps he was hoping to castle, but uh, he has moved the king already a number of times. So that's entirely off the cards. And now we learn that Chandra is a bully. Yeah, that was a bit, bit unpleasant for sure for him to experience the check, check, check. Uh, going to and fro a number of times. And now we are allowed to deliver a beautiful mate in one. Thank you, senor. Way too kind. And we jumped up 50 rating points, man. That's that's nuts. And now we are playing against KPD, also from India. A fellow countryman of Chandra. And we are going to chuck out the E4 Knight F3. Hi, Viet. Okay, let's go aggro against the Philidor defense. D4 is the best move. Now I'm going to do something quirky. I will take with the queen. Knight takes his best. But uh, I'm going to go for an extremely rapid development. And that's a terrible move there. Because it makes this square really, really weak and vulnerable. Um, the idea behind queen d4 was that if they attack it with knight c6, I get to pin it. And then take and then I have an extremely quick knight c3, bishop g5, castles. And everything is developed. Now we're going to sneak in a little check. And this may lead to a very positional game if after bishop d7, queen here, take, take, queen d7 is played. But the... Mate in one? I don't know. Uh, but the idea is to trade white squared bishops because these pawns are fixed on black. And there are also white squared weaknesses around. And that means that if we trade the white squared bishops then he's going to lose a piece that can actually cover these weak white squares. So technically that is a semi-threat because if I were to play knight c3 here, then he can't take this way because then I get this guy. Well, the bishop c6 could uh, turn into a red hot go at trapping my queen. Yeah, I'm just going to... I mean, knight c3 takes, knight takes is a cute trick because then uh, if he plays queen d7, I have knight c7. But after knight d7, I don't seem to have an awful lot. Let's just take this and then... The yellow squares are weak. <laughs> yeah, my bad. So it wasn't the white squares. Sorry, guys. It's it's not the white squares. It's the yellow. It's the red ones. It's the red squares that are weak. Now, actually, I'm regretting again my decision because that's what I'm best at in chess. Um, that one long goes. Thank you. Because after knight c3 b5, my queen is getting very awkwardly messed up there. <laughs> According to the chat, I need uh, 40 more squares and a ton of arrows to persuade anyone about uh, certain weak squares. Jay Coffee, thank you. Yeah, part of me wants to play c4, but I'm not excited about that move. Just do control b5. Yeah, I mean... Let's go. It's okay. We are now really seriously shutting down this square for sure. And the plan is just quickly 
castle, develop and pile up uh, on the d6 pawn and the d file. Um, yep, knight c3, that's a, the move uh, we expected. I really wanted to castle this way, but having played c4 now, that seems to be a little bit beyond uh, what I would consider adventurous. So we are just going to go castles, bishop f4 and rook d1. I'm always keeping an eye on this possible break. But with queen c7, he actually has denied himself from the possibility. Because now b5, I can even take with the knight because it's pinned. I dare say that the only reason behind this move is to castle queen side. Which, once again, is, is definitely looking more on the adventurous end. So I'm more than happy for that to happen. Not sure how I will respond. Some very quick b4 is probably... Uh, the order of the day then. Yep. So, we are still pretty solid in the prediction department. Mind you, considering that this move I consider to be an utter lemon, I shouldn't be so proud of uh, predicting this so accurately. Okay, let's go bishop f4. I like this move a lot. Because it creates a lot of discomfort on this diagonal. But also I'm tempting them to play knight here. Which would immediately surrender the weak white. Also known as red square. Now knight b6 was somewhat anticipated by me. But it moves the knight on an absolutely awful square. Admittedly it covers d5. And attacks c4. But it has nowhere to go. So now, I don't know, knight h5 or bishop e7 are the two moves that uh, I think are likely to happen. Um, okay, so he wants to play for g5. So now e5 is beginning to be a... Uh, to become a realistic... Uh, idea. Hmm. How do we do this? So I'm looking at e5. I don't know if I want to do this because the pawn is, is definitely. Something that I wanted to hassle. Okay, let's bring this rook here. Mm -hmm. And now I've got two options. Pull back. Or pull back. Okay, I was I was kind of tempted to come here to encourage this so that knight d5 take take rook takes, and then a quick pile up on that d pawn could uh, potentially lead to some juicy positions. Yeah, let's do that. I'm also inviting this, which is a terrible move now, uh, because uh, knight h4, knight f5. The position is taking a very positional character instead of tactical one. Which is um, quite okay, because uh, we need to master both aspects of the game in order to master the game itself. Um, yeah, having put the rook on d1, which I'm not sure if I put the if I chose the correct rook, but uh, somehow I felt like um, this rook may have come handy elsewhere later on. Whoa! Thank you, by the way, uh, K R S E M for the follow. This looks very odd. This looks very odd. But I just can't see yet how I could uh, punish this. Despite of my burning desire to do so. Flame Rider, thank you for the follow.
Okay, I've got a filthy plan which I'm trying to execute, so I'm going to pull back here. The idea is, but it's a, a little bit, uh, now I'm, I'm playing probably rather poor quality chess here. The idea is I want to play e5, and if pawn takes, I want to go queen f5. And then all of a sudden a lot of pieces will be pinned and awkwardly relying on each other. And if knight e5 after bishop takes, pawn takes, we're going to observe a very interesting scenario where he doesn't really have access to this square, but I do have access to that. Now take, take, takes means that he has to take with the king because this would hang uh, the pawn, which I'm not sure if he actually calculated, which is a polite way to say that uh, this lucky dude uh, blundered, but not quite. So take, 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 check. Now bishop can't block because then I take. Likewise with the queen. So the king goes back. And the reason why I tried this is because now I can swing queen f3. Threatening the knight. Bishop e7. Queen f5. Hitting the pawn. And I win. I like this. This was a very, very neat piece of calculation. So now I'm kind of inclined to look into something that is a decisive of uh, of decisive nature because now there is a possibility for me to open up the position when the rooks are disconnected and that means that there is a solid chance that i can cause harm so let's do this one more time take take actually no i'm not going to calculate anymore because i'm running short on time so now i will so take take rook takes now if queen takes within the pawn so king takes check here is a very nasty move because the logical bishop d6 fails to this. And when it tucks the king away, finally this queen that was struggling so much about finding a job is now really doing doing the damage. Because now the knight can't move without compromising f7 and d5. If bishop e7, this was the sexy, this check here. And uh, as per traditional, which I discussed a great deal earlier in the Chandra videos, when people un are under pressure, they immediately, or better people, uh, somewhat later, fall apart. So that was actually a very neat maneuver. I'm very proud of this. Um, and uh, the rest is essentially just uh, mopping up. Oh yes, Lauren, I, I don't... I consider that to be a very, very harmful habit to to vary the rate of how much and how deeply I calculate depending on the rating of the opponent. Not only would I consider that very, very disrespectful, but also positively hurtful for my own chest. So I don't care if it's uh, Maxi Bucks, also known as Magnus, I will take this rook and then take the queen. Or if they take, then we want an exchange. Or, you know, someone 900 rated, it's the position that I'm playing, not the opponent. And therefore, um, I'm adjusting the depth and the intensity of my calculation to the position, not to the opponent. And I mean that wholeheartedly um, and fully and genuinely. That's a terrible move, irrespective of material considerations. You never want to push your pawns on the color of your bishop. And you never, ever want to have pawn structures like this when there's a gap between. Because once I put a piece in there, you can never, ever eliminate it from there. By the way, guys, what did you think about my recent review of the Hellstone book? That video has become uh, quite popular. <gasps> Excuse me. Now I have got mate into incoming. Thank you, Hunter Chess King. I'm glad you liked it. And now my opponent is going to sit here for five minutes instead of resigning about four moves before mate. Nope. So now both of these are met with mate, and if he goes there, I have check and then promote mate.
<laughs> and uh, I think with those two games, we are going to call off uh, the Chandra speedrun. But I would like to have a quick look into whether I play this opening correctly or not situation. Bishop b5 check was good. Takes was good. C4 was good. Wow. Okay. So we played this actually better than I thought. Knight c3 was fine. Bishop. Okay. Bishop f4 was probably more prudent here. Still good. Queen b3 good. Wow, man. And then a4 was a move to play. And rook a d1 is on the cards also. And bishop g3 is the computer's preference. Okay, rook here. g5 back. Knight back. And I was thinking about... Oh, queen c2, best move. Get out of town. Wow, man. Wow. I never thought that would be best move there, but I'm so happy because that e5 motif, man, that was a ripper. And the rest was... Oh no, rook d1 is better than queen d1. <gasps> oh no. My favorite move of the game was the only one where I actually went wrong. Uh, I was so impressed with this maneuver, man. Queen e7, wow. Okay, I didn't even look at that move. The idea is to have the queen on the correct side of the f-pawn so that when I go check knight here, then the pawn doesn't hang. Wow, that was deep. Okay, and the rest was carnage. What's the report like? So I got 94. That's nothing to write home about, but... Uh, yeah, we'll take it for the time being. And I wanted to have a quick look into the previous game. How do I do that again? Just very briefly. Chess memes on the main site of chess.com. That's hilarious. Okay, let's have an analysis here. So yeah, d4 is an objectively better move here. Knight c6, knight g5, e6. a6 is best. Wow. Okay. So that was kind of meh. Knight b5. Knight c6 is best move. <laughs> yeah, that was not going to happen. h6 takes, takes. Knight f3, g4, knight e5. We're missing some... Man, I can't believe I missed this. Oh no, I missed G3. I apologize to all the YouTube viewers for not seeing this. That is such a basic motive, man. And the whole idea is that they obviously can't take like this because of their pin. And if they take here, then I have bishop d6 and then I can take this with a check behind. And uh, basically, we would have had a very similar scenario to the game with the queens on. Oh, no. Apologies, guys. Chandra is having a very sad moment. Okay, that was correct. And yeah, he fell apart here, so the rest was not so great. Actually, bishop d6 is be be best move here, so that's all good. And he fell into a very ugly mate here. Or very pretty, depending on how you look at it. So, that was Chandra for today, guys. Um, I don't know if we managed to meet the requirements of being uh, as educational as I would have liked it to be. I think that um, as we climb the ladder, it is going to gradually get better and better. Um, but um, that was us for today. Thank you very much for tuning in in the YouTube. And I will be back with more soon. Thank you. Bye.